Hi everyone, welcome. If you have been following the videos I did on my DL380, you see in the background my HP server, the main server in my network. Well, you've noticed that I ran into a little trouble with my server regarding the performance of that server. The server itself was running fine, dockers were running fine, but I had some performance issues with the virtual machines running on Unraid on that server. Unraid is my NAS solution, but was also my hypervisor. And uh, so I was running my virtual machines, obviously, on Unraid. And um, I did some tests, I did a couple of videos about that. And I also showed you the performance issues I had on my setup. So if you didn't see those videos, in a nutshell, uh, what it boiled down to was that the performance was more of a hard drive instead of a SSD. Um, opening Explorer would take a couple of seconds, uh, the same went for the web browser, and it, it was not a snappy experience. So I did a couple of tests also with ESXi, and ESXi was performing way better on that same server with the same CPUs, and back then I still had the 2450L CPUs, so the low-powered CPU, CPUs from uh, Intel, uh, two of them. Um, I played with cores, uh, I played with different uh, data store options, so I passed through an SSD directly to the VM, uh, but I also did some tests with uh, V-Disks, and nothing really mattered. It was still very sluggish, and it was was not an enjoyable experience and I also stated in one of the videos that if it's not a snappy experience I probably won't use it and that was exactly what was happening I stopped using VMs on my Unraid server and well it, it was the purpose of this server it it, it had to do virtual machines uh, the dockers you see in the background getting access to my media my videos my music all that kind of stuff it needed to be the central server in my network so it was a bit of a shame. Uh, eventually I decided to upgrade the CPUs. So I bought a couple of CPUs from um, AliExpress for that cheap. Um, you see them in the background, the E5 2470 V2 CPUs. Uh, those are 10 core, 20 thread CPUs. Um, I got two of them, so 20 cores, 40 threads. Well, it did improve a little bit, but not to the extent that I was happy with. So about a month ago, I decided to try something else. And I got the idea, what if I use ESXi as the hypervisor and virtualize Unraid? I didn't want to get rid of Unraid because I like the setup, I like the way it uh, talks to my disks. It's working really nice. Uh, you can see I have all kinds of Docker containers in the background. A couple of them are uh, removed because I found different solutions for that. I didn't want to use it for VMs anymore because the VMs were running better on ESXi. So that's when I decided I'm gonna try to run ESXi as my hypervisor, virtualize Unraid, still gonna use my Docker containers on my Unraid setup, and then uh, my virtual machines uh, will get a part on the ESXi server. Yeah, I got started with that, and uh, in, what you see in the background is actually Unraid virtualized on ESXi. And like I said, I've been running this for the last four weeks or so, and it's it's running great. I gave it eight cores and I gave it uh, eight gigabytes of RAM, which might be a little bit tight. I have plenty of RAM in my server now, 128 gigabytes, so I can just add some more and we'll be fine. And the only thing that is running on this uh, are my network shares, of course, the, the data, etc. And we're going to walk through that in a moment. But uh, just in a nutshell, uh, some of the Docker containers are still on this uh, setup. But there are no virtual machines left. So I also disabled the virtualization side of that. Um, this, and I will log into ESXi. This, what you see in the background, is um, is the main OS on my server now. It's running from a USB stick and it's running fine for the last month. Um, ESXi 7.0 Update 1. It's a HP Enterprise custom ISO uh, from ESXi. And yeah, what can I say? It's, it's running pretty great. Um, Unraid is running on the background. I also have a Ubuntu server. Some stuff is running on that. Uh, Windows 10 VM, the VM I was talking about, um, that wasn't giving me a good experience. 
And uh, Xpanology DSM 6.2 installation, just a test installation, and that is running fine as well. And if we scroll down, you can see the several VLANs I have configured on my network. I also have them configured on ESXi, and they can be used by the VMs. So some VMs will only have access to the home lab, other VMs will have private LANs, or basically everything. And maybe some others in the future will have IOT access only. Uh, below that, you can see I have two SSDs. And uh, these SSDs both have uh, a data store on them. They are not in a RAID configuration, so if an SSD fails, well, then I'm out of luck. And the VMs that are stored on those SSDs, of are stored on that particular SSD, uh, will be gone. I don't have a backup configured right now for the VMs. Yeah, it, it's just a testing phase I'm in right now. And yeah, I can only say it's, it's working pretty good so far. Um, the thing is with this server, and I shot some footage a couple of weeks ago uh, of this configuration. Um, it, it, it's a little bit of a sketchy setup, but the, the front base of my server are uh, 12 times LFF base. And I have installed my three and a half inch hard drives in there. It's SATA drives, it's a SAS uh, SATA backplane. Um, those are connected to a P420 uh, RAID controller from HP. And uh, that RAID controller is on pass through to my unRAID VM. The SSDs you see for the data store were also in that same front bay. And uh, well, I don't want to pass them through because I want to use them as a data store in ESXi. So what I did is I connected the hot swap bays that are in the back of the server, which have two slots as well. I connected that to the, uh, I believe the B120i that is uh, an onboard controller on the server itself. I didn't have any plans to use it for anything. So I just disconnected those cables from the backplane, connected them on the uh, to the onboard uh, connector on the motherboard. And um, basically I was good to go. The same goes for the USB controller because ESXi is a booting from a USB stick. So I inserted the ESXi bootable USB stick on the internal slot and the unraid bootable USB stick on the back of the server and pass that through to the unraid VM as well. So let's have a look on this unraid VM. Uh, if we edit this, it's, it's a pretty straightforward configuration. As you can see, eight cores and eight gigabytes of memory, uh, squishy controller, LSI uh, parallel. Well, there isn't anything on it. I didn't create any disk because I only wanted to boot from the USB and then I wanted the P420 uh, as a pass through on this VM. So then it came to the boot process of actually be able to boot from the USB stick I already had from this setup. I just wanted to migrate my current configuration and not do the whole thing again. And for that, I used this program and this is plopkexec. Um, you can just download it here and I will link it in the video description as well. Uh, what it does is it is a small ISO file. You can mount it uh, within your virtual machine and you can see it here this one and that one will take over the boot and it will allow you to boot from a USB device within ESXi um, for your VM. And yeah, we can demonstrate that. Um, we can shut this one down. Yeah, and everything is stopped. And now we can safely shut down our server. Going down, yes. And maybe we can give it a little bit more RAM as well while we're at it. Well, we're going to give it 16 gigabyte. Why not? Plenty of RAM. Yeah. So now we're going to start it. And then you can see the boot process I was talking about. And that's this little program. And this will boot my Unraid uh, from the USB drive, just like it would uh, on bare metal and it's booting unraid. So basically the only thing I did is uh, make sure that it's always booting from the CD drive, the virtual CD drive, and well, that's working fine. And as you can see, the P420 is on pass through. I was also testing with a Nvidia, with an old Nvidia Quadro card, and that isn't, wasn't working like it should. So probably because the card was too old, and now I'm waiting for a P2000, um, so I can test that one in my server, see if that works. If that works, well, maybe for transcoding uh, the, the videos with Plex, 
Um, if that's working, maybe I'm considering upgrading the server with uh, such a video card. It's a little bit pricey between the four and 500 euros. So yeah, I'm still thinking about that, but it's fun to try. Let's try again. And there we go. I'm gonna log in. And as I mentioned, the hard drives and of course caching SSD I had are still connected in the front base of this server. And well, Unraid is still thinking it's running on bare metal. So that's fine by me. Um, so we're gonna start this array. We have all our hard drives, the parity drive, the member drives and the caching SSD. And of course the 500 gigabyte hard drive for the security footage of my IP camera. And the array is started, very nice. So if you go back to dashboard, yeah, that will take some time because now it's starting up all the Docker containers that will put some load on my CPUs. And the RAM is 16 gigabyte um, because we added uh, another eight gigabytes and we have plenty left. Now it's using 30 gigabytes. Well, of the 128 gigabytes. So yeah, plenty of RAM left. So that is basically um, the configuration for my Unraid server. Well, I still have most of my Dockers running within Unraid because it's running fine. It's easy to manage. And um, then if we go back, um, <laughs> the main issue was the Windows 10 VM. That will be this one. And that one is running. Yes, no, no thanks. No, no tour, no, no Grammarly tour. No, thank you. And that's this VM. Yeah, and it's still slow. <laughs> so now we are creating a remote desktop connection. Don't ask me again. Yes, please. And that's this. One. Yes, that's the one. So let's get that one over there or here. Make it a little bit bigger. So I gave this VM um, eight CPU cores. Yeah. Eight CPU cores with eight gigabytes of RAM. The, the hard drive size I gave it is 120 gigabyte. It is running pretty good, but still not as fast as bare metal. And yeah, well, it, it, it is snappy. Um, way faster than with my Unraid server. I think it has something to do with, um, with the CPU load, but I also tested with CPU pinning, um, uh, core isolation and it didn't matter. It, it stayed sluggish. Uh, starting up only Edge uh, on basically the same VM. This is also a pretty clean install. Uh, I only installed the tools I need just with uh, just like with the other VM. Um, but now I can actually use it and not, not have to wait uh, three or four seconds before Edge finally starts up or wait a couple of seconds before Explorer finally um, responds. No, it is actually working right now and it's uh, it's it's fairly usable so i'm i'm pretty happy with this now i don't know if this will be my final setup as i mentioned i want to keep using unraid for my um, for my data storage uh, as as a nas solution and yeah also the docker containers are running really well on that system it's easy to manage i know the system so that will probably stay like it is now but now I have um, plenty of cores left for other VMs, so I could also install the test VMs. I was planning to do on my micro server or the super micro or the gen six I also have in the pantry, but maybe I'm gonna move it all to this and give some another purpose to the older servers. Maybe get rid of the older servers. I still want the want the uh, UPS and I want the rack mount UPS, so that will take some space as well. We'll just have to see how that goes. But for now, I just wanted to share with you the uh, the changes I made to my um, to my DL three eighty, which is um, <laughs> yeah, well, virtualizing Unraid, virtualizing the hypervisor. Give it a name. Uh, that will be it for this video. If you have any comments, suggestions, maybe some advice, please leave them down in the comment section. Thank you all for watching, and see you in the next one. Bye.